I am disappointed. The eyes of the whole country is on us, and colored people are better than this. Can we respect this moment? All of us. I want to say to you, JJ, that you've wasted a solid hour that we as activists could have spent making sure our communities are safer. I can tell you now, as the NCC, we have more voters on the Cape Flats where the people are dying than most of the parties on front, but you ignored us. So 360 experience with Thomas M. Me? I still maintain my position that every province should be responsible for their own policy. South African Police Service has failed South Africans. Begikele, as a minister, he has failed South Africans. So how long will South Africans continue to sing the same tune over and over again? And what is it exactly that must happen before these people actually start implementing change? South African Police Service as an institution, it has failed South African. South African Police Service as an institution is corrupt. South African Police Service is the same institution that has been accused of working with criminals, the same institution that has been accused of doxing the people that are reporting crimes. So how long will South Africans continue to sing the same tune over and over again? You look at Begit Kalemen, the only thing that Begit Kalemen knows is to go to press conferences and give statements and wear his coffee hat, and there is nothing that he can offer to the people of South Africa. Absolutely nothing. He has failed as the Minister of Police. He has, like, he has failed as the Minister of Police. People are still being killed in South Africa. People are still being targeted by criminals in South Africa. Criminals are still doing as they please in South Africa. And I guess this is one of the reasons why South Africans hated so much when President Ramaphosa and his administration put so much energy, time and effort into the matters of Gaza to make sure that the people of Gaza are safe, whereas South Africans are feeling unsafe. South Africans are feeling unsafe. No one feels safe, man. I don't care where you live in South Africa. You can live in the townships. You can live in farms. You can live in the suburbs. You can live in informal settlements. I don't care where you live in South Africa. You are not safe. You are not safe. Your children are not safe. And your family is not safe. It's because we don't have proper policing in South Africa. We have all of these people that are compromised. All of, all of these people that are easily bribed by the police. So why must the South Africans continue? To, to support the South African Police Service. And the worst part, you'll see the minister will come out and tell South Africans not to, not to ever take the matters into their own hands. Not to ever take the matters into their own hands. If you see something wrong or if something wrong is happening, please call the South African Police Service. He acts as if he doesn't know how South African Police Service conducts its business. And I guess this is the reason why South Africans are so frustrated that you expect us to trust the South African Police Service. Have you seen the security of Bekitkel? Why does Bekitkel need so much security if South Africa is safe? If he continues to maintain the position that the South African Police Service is working for the people of South Africa. So why does he have so many security details? So it is okay for him to have the security detail. But it is not okay for South Africans to be safe. I mean, like this whole issue of policing in South Africa, I mean, it is starting to be irritating. It is starting to be irritating. You look at what is happening in the Western Cape. You look what is happening in the Western Cape. It's all politics. Guys, I've said it before. It's all politics. The ANC will never allocate enough resources to deal with crime in the Western Cape. Because if you have a crime read in Western Cape, you, you, you actually have a chance of actually telling the people that, guys, ah, you see the DA comes out and says that they are governing better. You can see that their streets are rotten. See all of these places that are riddled with crime in the Western Cape. Then the DA, the audacity of the DA to come out and say that they are governing better. This works well politically for the African National Congress because most people do not even sit back and think that okay south african police service is been gov it's been run by the governance which means the the, the policing that is, is is taking place in the western cape is been run by the governance so it makes sense for these people not to provide enough resources to the south african police service in the western cape because if you provide enough resources to the south african police service in the western cape you actually gonna make people look at the da different this whole thing of crime it is one of the issues that actually makes people feel skeptical about supporting the da because many people do not think about all of these things many people do not understand how these things work it is politics it is politics so how many colored people must die 
How many people must die in the streets of Western Cape before these people stop playing politics? How many colored communities, like people have been losing their parents, people are losing their children, people are losing their babies with stray bullets. Stray bullets are killing people in their own homes. But the people still want to play politics. People still want to play politics. Imagine sitting in your own home, watching television, then bang, the bullet hit your child, the bullet hit your mother, the, healer, the bullet hit your partner. Then when the police comes out and when the, and, and when the comrade comes out, they will say, ha, the DA comes out and says that they are, the, they are the best governing party in South Africa. But you can see the crime is, is, is destroying the Western Cape. Why don't they do anything about the crime that is destroying the Western Cape? I mean, I think these people are taking advantage of the fact that the South Africans are not, most of the South Africans are not educated. Most South Africans, they subject themselves to group think. That's why it's impossible for them to sit down and actually think about these things. They subject themselves to group think. It is so embarrassing seeing young people, man, young people as me, saying that the DA or the people in the Western Cape, they are failing to deal with, with crime. But the same crime is being run by Bekitlele. The same policing in the Western Cape is being run by South African Police Service. It is so embarrassing to see people say that. So why don't you allow provinces to have their own, pro to have their own policing? Because if provinces can run their own policing, then we can actually say that, okay, the DA, you have failed to deal with the crime in the Western Cape. Okay, you have failed to deal with the crime in the Johannesburg. Ah, maybe ANC in the Free State. You guys have actually failed to deal with the crime in the Free State. We can say that. But the fact that these people do not allow provinces to, to have their own policing, it shows you that everything is politics. It shows you that everything is politics. Man, I'm sick and tired of people dying in South Africa. Because of this politics that has been played, I'm sick and tired of people dying in the Western Cape. Many every every morning when you wake up, you go to the you go to the internet and you watch what is happening on the internet. Man, I remember last time Yusuf Yusuf Hamji reported that I think what six people like they were killed in Cape Flats before 10 a.m. Six or ten people were actually killed in the in the Cape Flats before 10 a.m. Can you imagine that? But we are here. We still want to play politics. We still want to say, yeah, it is DA's fault. Ah, it is ANC's fault. Like, how many people actually must die in South Africa be before something is actually done? How many people must die before Big Kale says, guys, I have failed as a police minister? I have failed as a police minister. I'm talking about the same poli police minister that has written to Parliament saying that from 2019 to 2023, 5,000 police officers have been accused of heinous crimes. 5,000 police officers have been charged of heinous crimes. But 4,000 of these people are still wearing the South African Police Service uniform. Can you imagine that? So how long are these people going to continue to play politics? I, I mean, like that, like that is the only question that I have. How long are these people going to co 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 continue to play politics? Are you going to play politics with people's lives? And South Africans are sick and tired to see people die in the Western Cape. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, it is embarrassing to see people say that every time when you see the reports coming out that this number of people have died in the, in the Cape Flats, People, you will see people live rejoicing on the internet saying, yeah, the DA comes out and, and pretends like they are bad. Like, this is what you will see people do. But when the same report comes out about five people have been killed in KZN, oh, it is such a tragedy. How can these people kill five people in KZN? Oh, it is such a tragedy. We need to send our prayers. But if people are killed in the Western Cape, yeah, we don't care. Like, we don't care. Like, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing at this point. It's embarrassing, man. Politics at the expense of people's lives. Politics at the expense of people's lives. This is what is happening. They are playing politics at the expense of people's lives. The people on the ground, they are playing the same game too. The people on the ground, they are waiting for crime to hit them close. They are waiting for someone in their own home to die because of crime before they start saying, ah, we need to do something about crime. I don't understand how can people show empathy when people are killed in KZN or, or Johannesburg. But when people are killed in the Western Cape, it's like, ah, it's fine. Those people are like, those people are useless. Ah, those people are, they deserve whatever that is happening to them. 
Why can't we show empathy to people that are being affected by crime each and every day? It's the same thing with the storms. You remember, guys, the storms uh, last week, they hit Western Cape. No one, says, no one said anything about those storms hitting the Western Cape. But as soon as those storms went to KZN, people started saying, Oh, how can those? Oh, please, guys, let's donate. Oh, please. Oh. But the same storms hit Western Cape. The same storms hit Western Cape. The same thing, guys, you remember when, they, when, 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 when there was floods in Orania. People were actually celebrating that the people of Orania were affected by the floods. But when the floods started happening in, in KZN, People started showing empathy, like, no, we need to donate. Oh, guys, please, we need to donate and make sure that the people of Western Cape or the people of KZN are okay. But when you hear the reports about the flood hitting Orania, yeah, it is fine. They get exactly what they deserve. These people are getting exactly what they deserve. They stole our land. They, this is like, even the people on the ground, they are playing the same game of politics. I mean, like right now, politicians don't even have to defend themselves anymore. People are the ones that are defending politics. People like politicians don't even defend themselves anymore. This is how embarrassing it has gotten. Politicians are not even uh, defending themselves anymore because you have people on the ground that are willing to laugh at the people of Orania when they experience the floods and cry with the people of KZN when they experience the floods. I mean, like the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy, the people are being affected by the floods, the people are dying, people are losing their properties. Then you like you think like it is okay, you, like you can laugh, it is nice. But when the same floods ex hit KZN, you are crying with the people of KZN, you feel for the people of KZN. The same thing with, with, with policing, the same, like, like this is what politics has actually done to the people of South Africa. We no longer have empathy towards each other. We just look at your skin color and if your skin color, uh, if you are white, like uh, you are on your own. If you are black, oh man, may God be with you. It's part of truth. We are coming to you tonight from Mount View High School, uh, where uh, an anti-crime movement is launching here uh, its campaign to get communities to take their streets back. I want to uh, give a shout out to the principal of the school, Glennis Abraham Mayer, who has uh, kindly uh, given us opportunity to use this venue. Please give her a round of applause. We, we appreciate uh, the, your hospitality principle for hosting us in this important conversation. Yusuf, one or two questions to the minister and the MEC, please, before I get to the political parties. I think, um, JJ, first of all, I think we all heard the minister and the MMC, uh, MEC very clearly. But let's get one thing out of the way. Are we fed up with the high levels of crime, yes or no? Yes. Are the police doing enough to fight crime? No. Are there enough resources? No. Ladies and gentlemen, my question, JJ, to the Minister of Police, we know that the lack of resources has been an ongoing problem for years. We know there are various measures put into place to beef up police resources, and I think we as South Africans value and we appreciate that, but we need action. Can you give us an undertaking, Mr. Minister, here tonight and give us a time frame that over a certain period of time we will beef up the resources of the police in terms of manpower and the police to make the Cape Flat safe? Thank you. Minister. Man, you are just asking Big Kelly to lie because if you say, like, give us a time frame, you are simply asking him to lie. And please do not be mad when Big Kelly lies to you. <laughs> because the question should be, why haven't you given us enough resources that's how the question should be phrased not when are you going to give us enough resources why haven't you given us enough resources people have died already on the street why haven't you given us the resources not when are you going to give us the resources because you are actually giving him a leeway to cry to to to, to lie you are giving him a leeway to actually dish the question Mister? what yusuf is asking is what is happening jj yeah for instance, some years, few, three years ago, we were 14,000 police act, police officers here, were 16,559 now. Mm. We're moving up. For the fact that has not been a training in the country for a long time, and uh, in, uh, 
three years now, we're training 10,000 up. But in this province specifically, besides that, they are one of the, of the better resourced, not best. We, we have brought extra resources. For instance, we've got 1,500 people that come from national, all yeah. the POP, uh, the Special Task Force, the NIU, that are working here and all that. But also, yeah. two weeks ago, two weeks ago, we have brought, uh, uh, we brought Brigadier Mashamba with 83 more police to come and coordinate and work with the anti-gang unit and 36 extra yeah. police that come from other provinces. So you feel you are doing, you are doing enough already to enough keep up not, the resources? Enough not, but you're trying hard, yes. You are trying but hard. We, we, we have not reached, never be enough. We have not, we have not reached where we say is enough and indeed it's not about to be enough but a lot of effort is put on right. this. Quick one. I mean like you know this is this, like this is one of the reasons why I hate rhetoric. This is one of the reasons why I hate rhetoric because when someone comes out and says that we have done one, two, three, but the people on the ground, they can tell you that man, nothing has actually been done. We don't actually feel the difference. You can come here and tell us that you have trained 1,000 police officers. You can come here and tell us that you have given us inspectors such and such, but the people on the ground, they have not felt any safe. This is why I hate rhetoric. Because you can bring as much people as you want, you can bring as many, like as many people as you want. But if the snake does not change on its head, like the body that does nothing, unless we get rid of Bekitkele, nothing will ever change in the South African Police Service. Nothing. On the MEC, what can you promise the people? Thank you so much. We will definitely continue with our leap intervention. We have yeah. 1,300 leap officers working in our murder hotspot areas. No, listen. Sorry, let's listen to him. We will definitely continue with our LEAP intervention, which is part of our safety plan. I can further confirm that in terms of the city of Cape Town, there will be, be an additional 1,000 Metro Police officers in this financial year. We will continue to work with our rural safety units outside of the city of Cape Town. And guys, you need to, don you need to donate a chair for me, man. <laughs> you need to donate a chair for me. We will also continue with our K-9 units because in 2019, we saw a 38% reduction in sepsis K-9 units. So right. we have set up K-9 units from outside and the LEAP intervention, like I've indicated, are primarily within our murder hotspot areas. All right. Thank you, MEC. Let me start with... All right. All right, let's listen to each other. You'll get your chance to put questions to them, okay, but let's listen now. I'm going to get to the political parties. I'll start with you, ANC. What can you do differently to try and take the fight against crime to a higher level and push back on the gangsterism, the lawlessness, the drugs, and all of these things that are afflicting this community? You see this guy, guys, that is working here. This guy, that is the president of Nation, National Colors Community. I think this guy should be on stage. This is the president of National Colored. Is, is it National Colored? Con yeah, National Congress of Colors. Oh, let me check it first on the internet. I think it's National Congress of Colors or National Colors of Congress. Oh, let me see. National Colors. Yeah, National Colored Congress. This person is the president of National Colored Congress. And I don't understand why is this person not on stage. This person is on like should be like should be on stage because this is one of the people that are on the ground. I don't know, guys, if you are familiar with their YouTube channel with their YouTube channel. You should make sure that you you you, you check their, their 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 YouTube channel. These people are always on the ground. These people are speaking with the people in the ground. These people are interviewing the people that have been affected by the by, by crime on the ground. And I don't understand why is this person not on stage. This person is supposed to be on stage. Communities, give me two or three big things you think you can do. Try and be straight to the point. Thank you very much, JJ. Good evening to everyone. You know, sometimes when we talk about this issue, about the numbers, yeah. a thousand dying, mm. we forget that we're actually talking about young men. Mm. Now, there are people in this community, the CPF, the church leaders, many, many people, and I want to mention someone called Avril Andrews, who works with mothers who have lost 
their children. And I'm getting to your question. And I said to her, the kind of young men that we're losing every day. And she said to me, and she had a story to tell about each one of them. She talked about Alcardo. She talked about Tyrese, about Byron, about Nathaniel, Monray, Ashram, and Hassan. So what we need to understand when we talk about these issues, we are talking about young men mm. from this community and from other communities who are dying. So I agree with what's being said here. As far as possible, we need to be critical, but take out the party politics. JJ, yeah. the problem is, and I'll get to the three points quickly, is that the colleague and his party on my left, yeah. let our 15 years gehad. They've had 15 years. And we must, sometimes we must call a spade a spade. Yeah. If thousands of people, if thousands of people were dying in Bishop's Court, if thousands of people were dying in Newlands, this provincial government would All not right, have please, tolerated. Let's listen. So whatever Mr. Allen does, yeah. there is not the political will, because for 15 years, the governing party in this province is more concerned with the wealthy, with those who... You see, like, this is exactly what I was talking about. I mean, like, this is the reason why it is so frustrating to listen to ANC, especially when they talk about the issue that is affecting about the issue of crime that is affecting the people in the Western Cape. Like, you can already hear that the man is trying to play politics. He's trying to blame everything on the Democratic Alliance. He's trying to make it look like the African National Congress is not the one that is in charge of the South African Police Service. He's trying to make it look like, okay, this is the fault of the Democratic Alliance. The Democratic Alliance has actually failed to make sure that the people of Western Cape are, are safe, despite us being the ones that are in charge of their safety. We have what we will do... All right, please. They, Let's listen. The numbers of young men, yeah. Alcardo, Ashram, who are dying. If those young men were dying in other communities, they would have been action. So what is the action we need? Number one, let's not undermine... Let's not... Let's I mean, like, even the people on the ground, they can feel like, okay, this man is simply, like, undermining us. He's insulting our intelligence. He is insulting our intelligence. Even me listening to him, I feel like my intelligence has been insulted by this man. Not undermine in any way the need to work together with national, provincial and local. The problem right. is we need community belief. When the ANC governed, we had Bambanani. Those Bambanani people were in all the schools <laughs> and we worked with them. We will bring Bambanani back. But the bottom line, we will work with Minister Becky Tele. Some people want to insult him. How can you insult a minister that you're supposed to work with? And the DA, by fighting, are making it bad for the whole Western Cape. The Western Cape is suffering because the DA wants to fight national government. The ANC in the Western Cape will work All right. with national government. Okay, thank you. Hey, let me go to good. You, you, you like guys so do you see what what i was talking about earlier that right now the politicians don't even have to defend themselves but they have the people on the ground defending them the people of the african national congress they are clapping hands they are clapping hands because this man is saying that western he's basically saying that western cape has been riddled by crime because it's governed by the democratic alliance that's what he's saying basically so he means that he he he, he insinuates that where the African National Congress governs, crime is bad. <laughs> That's what he's saying. <laughs> you look at the provinces that are governed by Western Cape. I live in, I, I, by, that are governed by the ANC. I live in the first state, and the first state is governed by the ANC. Like the crime in the first state is totally out of control. Look at all the provinces that are governed by the ANC. So he's trying to blame the Democratic Alliance for, for being the ones that are failing the people on the ground by insinuating that if the people maybe can vote for the African National Congress or if maybe the people can look at the way of the African National Congress, maybe their crime problem will be, will be solved. But at the same time, you have eight provinces that are governed by the ANC. So are you going to blame one province and saying that this province is, is, is failing to deal with crime because of the DA? But we have eight provinces that we have failed to, to protect. I mean, like this whole thing would have made sense if 
eight provinces that are governed by the ANC. If these provinces were safer, were safer than the Western Cape, then we could actually say that, yeah, of course, maybe, maybe the problem is the DA. But the thing is that crime is totally out of control in all the in like in all the provinces in South Africa. All the provinces in South Africa. And now Western Cape has been given the special treatment because Western Cape is one province that is actually not willing to to to, to be governed by the by by, by, by the African National Caucus. <laughs> man, I hate what politics has done to us, man. We go to good, yes. What will you do differently? You've heard what the NC has to say. What will you do differently in this community? Let's listen, yeah. please. Ladies thank, and gentlemen. Uh, thank you. Listen. Thank you, JJ. Look, I mean, it's obvious we need better policing. Yeah. We need policing that is efficient and responsive. Yes. That means when you phone them, they come. It means that they've got vehicles to come to you when, they, when you call them. It means... When you phone them, the phones are working and they can answer the phone. Yeah. But this whole debate is framed wrong because policing will not solve crime. We yeah. need to address the root causes of crime. Yes. And what is, we have to ask the question, why are young children, seven-year-old seven boys, joining stoning gangs yeah. so that they can be groomed to become murderers? Why are they doing that? Why are these communities so neglected? that people have got no hope other than to join gangs. Yeah. So we have to look at the causes of crime. If you are only going to focus on policing, you are never going to succeed. The DA in the Western Cape government has put two billion rand into additional resources, policing yeah. resources. That puts LEAP officers, learner law enforcement officers in the most dangerous communities and they are expected to halve the murder rate. They are learner law enforcement <laughs> officers. They put drones in the sky. Yeah. The drones do nothing. These people are still dying. They put CCTV cameras. All right. No, wait a minute. Uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. AJ, <laughs> JJ, just, just they pause. Are, they are. Yeah. This, Wait. this group here Just pause. is exactly what the, the CPF is saying. This group. <laughs> this group is supposed to be... I mean, like, it feels like these people simply went there for entertainment, man. It doesn't feel like these people are discussing something that is affecting them each and every day. The way they are making noise, the way they are clapping hands, the way they are booing, the way they are heckling... Like, it doesn't seem like these people are actually there to discuss the issue that is affecting them directly. Now, it's, it's for entertainment. Like, if someone from the good speaks, we're going to clap hands. And if someone from the good speaks, we're going to boo. Like, if someone from the DA speaks, we're going <sighs> to... Man, you know, like, I love defending South Africans. But sometimes, man, South Africans are so hard to defend. Sometimes South Africans are so hard to defend, man. You know, sometimes I feel like I defend the South Africans, then tomorrow I will come back and say that the South Africans are getting exactly what they deserve. But tomorrow I will come and say, guys, what is happening to South Africa? I mean, I don't like what is happening to South Africa because after all, I love this country. I love the people of this country. But when we, when we behave like this, when we behave like this, like it makes it impossible for some of us to actually defend you. Because me, I want to talk about the issues that are affecting the people of the, of the Western Cape on the ground. I don't want to talk about all of this. Like, it's politics, it's, it's election season, people are blaming each other. That's why I'm saying, like, how can the people on the ground allow these politicians on stage to blame each other instead of actually addressing the issues <laughs> that are affecting the people on the ground? How can the people on the ground actually allow these politicians to continue to blame each other instead of talking about how they are... Oh, my God. A neighborhood yeah. watch, but it is funded by the DA, so they're hijacked. Yeah. But let me finish my point. They invest in t t toys. They are like the political leaders are like boys with toys. Yeah. Just Drones, CCTV, yeah, cameras, wait a little bit. shot spotter that wait. does nothing. Baha Biki. Still dying. Baha Biki. All right. So. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are on national TV. Ne? So if you're on national TV and you shout, it means that people at home won't hear what he's saying. Okay? 
So please, it's okay to clap here and there, but not to shout when somebody is talking. If you do that, there's no point to continue because people at home won't hear anything. Okay. PA. Uh, that the Mackenzie, your turn now. I. <laughs> oh my God. All right. I just want to say, JJ. I am no. I. What will the PA do differently? I am. I'm no fan. I'm no fan of the DA. But it's very rich for the ANC to say they had 15 years while they had 30 years <laughs> and they did nothing. <laughs> Number two. And me, guys, personally, I don't know, I wish this conversation could actually be focused on the issue of crime because. I don't want us to go into politics because, you know, once we go in that way of politics, we're actually going to ruin everything that is happening. I mean, like, right now you can say that that person from Good was so fired up, but Good got a couple of votes and Patricia Dilili went into bed with African National Congress, the same African National Congress that is failing to make sure that the people of Western Cape are safe. Gaten McKenzie can say something that makes sense right now, but... What if we say that getting McKenzie, you've actually said that you want, like, that's why I say, guys, I don't want this conversation to be about politics, man. I wish we could actually have this conversation and not center this conversation around politics. Around politics and around, like, political party trying to, to, to campaign, whereas they, 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 they should be addressing the people on the crowd. Because if we go in a way of politics, I don't think this conversation is going to end in the way that we like. I don't think it's going to end in the way that we like. All right, Number silence. Two. You see, I'm so shocked where I'm sitting because I heard the MEC saying he's working hand in hand with the national department. Yeah. Everybody here, every time we ask whose mistake is it, why are our children dying? They blame the national government today when the national government is here. He talks about hand in hand. He must tell us why our children die. Number three. Number three. They, they are giving big tenders to the gangsters in this province. They. They. In the Western Cape. Wait. Silence. In the Western Cape, there's no gangster I, that, that I'm scared of. They are evicting people. Then the gangsters come and pay the money and then take the auntie's children. This is our problem also. The DA was begun in this province. <laughs> All right. So. All right, all right, silence. So, in summary, what will, what will the PA do if you are to come to power to push back on the, the, the extent of criminality that is afflicting our communities? Give me something concrete that I can believe I you think on. If you look at if you look at the whole world, say, say, if you look at the whole world, you see our problem is so far gone in this country. And the only country that mirrors half of our problem is El Salvador. They have a guy there that became the president. His name is Niap Bukele. Yeah. 40 people died every day. Niap Bukele came and he said, I'm going to deal decisively with this problem. Niap Bukele. Ne? Hey, our children die more than Palestine. Our children die more than Palestine. Uh, tell me about Palestine here. Our children <laughs> die. Our children die. Wachi, ekas van Zuid Afrikaners, they spill. These are the representatives of National Colored Community, National Colored Congress. <laughs> okay, please go to settle down. Go to Ramallah. You'll get your chance. Go to Palestine, get your chance. Yes. Hey. And speaking of Palestine, speaking of Palestine. I remember last time people said that the Muslim community 
is going to vote for the African National Congress because the African National Congress has basically stood for the people of Palestine. I was baffled by this rhetoric. Because are you telling me that the Muslim community is willing to give the African National Congress another chance to continue destroying South Africa simply because South Africa made a stance against Palestine? Are these people going to vote against the interest of South Africans simply because the African National Congress has stood up for Palestine? So you're going to ignore the problems that are happening in South Africa and vote for the ANC simply because they stood up for people that we don't even know where they live. Most of South Africans do not even know where Palestine is on the map. So are we going to vote for the people that have been destroying this country because the governance has actually stood for the people of Palestine? Like, how, how does it make sense? If you live in South Africa, you are okay with the carnage that is happening in South Africa because the, African, the, the, the governance of South Africa has actually stood for the people of Palestine. To me, it didn't make no sense. And I hope that the Muslim community do not vote for the ANC simply because the ANC stood up for the people of Palestine. Because if they vote for the ANC because the, the, the ANC stood up for the people of Palestine, it means that they have no loyalty to South Africa. It means like they have no loyalty to South Africa. They would rather go watch South Africa go down to the ashes. As long as the governance in South Africa stood up with the people of Palestine, we need to prioritize South Africa. We need to make sure that South Africa is okay. Of course, we can, we, can, we, can, we can have empathy for what is happening in Palestine. We can have our own opinions for what is happening in Palestine. But we cannot wish our country to go down the train, whereas we are trying to protect the people of Palestine. You know, every time when I hear the people saying that the ANC is going to get the Muslim vote because of their stance of, on, on Palestine, I'm saying, like, are these people honestly willing to vote for the ANC again, for the ANC to continue destroying the country? Simply because they stood up against the people of Palestine. Are they willing to watch South Africa go down the ashes? Simply because the NC governance has stood up for the people of Palestine. I mean, I hope it is not true. I hope it is not true. And I hope that the Muslim community can actually make a better choice because they live in South Africa. These people who will be voting for the African National Congress, they live in South Africa. They are affected by the policies of, Af of, of ANC. They are affected by the criminality of the ANC. So I hope they're going to help South Africans to vote out the ANC. I hope they're going to help South Africans to vote out the ANC. Because if they're going to continue to vote for the ANC, it means like they have no loyalty for South Africa. And guys, how did that whole thing of Palestine start? You see, like, this is the problem of watching these town halls where people are heckling each other and everything because it's hard to actually hear where this whole thing of Palestine started because I think this person who is standing here was a heckler. I think he was heckling Gaten McKenzie. But if people were more quiet, we could actually hear what this man is saying. But we don't even know what this man said because people are making noise there. We cannot even hear what this what, what this man is actually saying or what he said that made getting McKenzie so angry. And I I I, I, I I'm like this is the reason why I am like I, I I'm I'm equally angry at these people that are watching this town show because they cannot keep their mouth shut. They cannot keep their mouth shut and allow the people on stage to actually speak and debate because they still gonna have their own chance to get the mic and ask the questions or criticize the people on stage. Why are they not letting the people on stage speak and end so that they can get their own chance so that they can ask questions and they can criticize or maybe they can say whatever they want to say to the people on stage. I mean, like, it is so frustrating watching this town hall. It is so frustrating. Okay, carry on, uh, Gaten. Guys, lost form, lost form, lost form. So I guess the National Colored Congress will no longer work with Patriotic Alliance because it looks like National Colored Congress is not having good relations with Patriotic, with Patriotic Alliance. You remember last time I did that video of the president of National Colored Congress. And I remember even the likes of Gaten McKenzie came out and said that they hope the National Colored Congress actually works with the Patriotic Alliance because you know the DA has failed the people of Western Cape. So they hope the National Colored Congress works with the Patriotic Alliance. So I'm guessing from this exchange only, the National Colored Congress will not be working with Patriotic Alliance. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. 
Gaten. Uh, uh, carry on, please. Carry on, please. Why is there so much chaos, man? <laughs> Why is there so much chaos? Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to, 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 to move on. I'll come back to you again. All right? I'll no, do not move on, JJ Taban, man. Why are you not calling these people to order? You are the one that is actually hosting the show, man. Call these people to order, man. Tell them that, guys, if you don't want to participate, you can get the hell out. Because the conversation can still go. South Africans are watching on, the, on, on TV. Come back to you again. Well, let's say a bit of a come. Minister, you've heard what some of the parties are saying. And it seems like there is... A you see, people are divided by political lines. People are divided by politics. People are divided because that person is wearing the T-shirt of Patriotic Alliance. And this one is wearing the T-shirt of National Colored Congress. That one is wearing the T-shirt of GOAT. That one is wearing the T-shirt of DA. Actually, they don't see that all of them they are affected by crime. They don't see that all of them are affected by crime. Some of them, they are willing to say, ah, maybe the ANC didn't do anything wrong simply because they are wearing the T-shirts of ANC. Some of them are willing to say, maybe the DA has no responsibility in everything that is happening because I'm wearing the ANC, the DA T-shirt, man. And I feel like people, when it comes to the issues like crime, like we should be able to put our political differences aside and say, guys, this whole thing affects all of us. A, a mix of what is being done now and, and what is either not possible or can be possible only in the long term give me a sense of hope about you know whether or not we can arrest the state of gangsterism in particular uh, JJ, maybe the the point raised by Harun is the center of us dealing with all the problem it doesn't matter how much you increase the security agencies. Yeah. If the, the conditions do not change on the ground, we're yeah. not going to win. Yes. When, when I was here on Sunday, yeah. when I was here on Sunday, they raised the issue of a nine-year-old that has never been at school. And that is a pool for a gangster. And police have got nothing to do really with that. They, the, there are 10 year olds that run with the guns here yeah. and we are not going to send the police to arrest a 10 year old so the parents the social structures all of us must come together yeah social conditions will really put people to behave in that particular please way listen so while we are please improving terror, please. and we are putting resources but resources must put on the social condition. People live proper. If you go to the townships around here, sewage is all over and all that kind of thing. And those are the conditions that people feel abandoned and yes. they behave otherwise. Yes, all of us, let's increase, let's put resources, but let's improve the social conditions and life will be better. By the way, black people, and colored people are not inherently violent. Yeah. And then the white people are good and are well behaving. Are the conditions that are making those people. So we need to really work hard to change conditions. All of us, not here in West Kenya, but all yeah. of us, let's improve the, CPF, the conditions. your comment on what the political parties are saying. You said that we mustn't allow politics to divide us. Is that, what is the sense that you are getting from the political parties today? about what they are saying they can do for you. Is there something there that you can challenge them on? Yes, um, that is what I said in my opening speech, is that politics, politics must be separated from our situation. Because if politics are removed from our situation, we were able to draw a little closer to each other. As you can see, this is my community. Yes. And I, 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 I particularly, didn't silence them when they were carrying on like this so that you can have a holistic picture of what's happening in Hanover Park. So now at this moment in time, we need to draw closer to one another. Yes. We need to put our differences aside, move closer to one another, sit down 
and see what is the way forward for the betterment of this area, Hanover Park. Thank you very much. I'm going to come to the community now. Uh, Yusuf, who, what do you have there? What is the community saying? Let's hear. But it was not fair to not let Gaten McKenzie finish what he wanted to say. And you, you, like, you stopped Gaten McKenzie speaking because he was, you, like, there was a back and forth between him and those guys of NCC. But it was not like, like, it was not like... Uh, Ah, hear on. from the members of the community about how they are feeling about this whole issue of crime in this community. Jay, Jay, we've heard, we've heard some of the politicians. Can we please have some silence, ladies and gentlemen? We've heard some of the politicians, and it's important that we listen to you and the South African public listens to what you have got to say. So please, can we just maintain some order? Let me lay down the golden rules. Please keep it short and sharp so that we can give more members of the community a chance to express themselves, introduce yourself, and please, short and sharp. Pastor, you from, the, from Mitchell's Plain, introduce yourself, and what's your comment or your question? My name is, my name is Dean Ramjumia. I live out in the Beacon Valley community. I myself come from a deep place of having to walk the, uh, the journey of change. However, I want to be very clear and decisive and repeat my question that I ask the minister on Sunday, what did you mean when you make this sign? Because it is very clear that of where I come from, sir, that it is no worth without question. You need to be clarify what is it what you meant when you did that sign. The second thing that I would expect you to come here tonight is to first start to give us a report and a feedback that you have execute sufficient search warrant just after Sunday to arrest the many suspects that were killed over the past 48 hours on the Cape Flats. But none of that comes from your mouth. Many of you have mentioned quite a bit about the Constitution. I would want to say to you, our Constitution has become an indictment against a very state in which we live as a people. Lastly, I want to say to us as a people, to all the political parties there, if you want to complain about crime and criminality to the religious establishment, begin to start assume responsibility of how your members conduct itself, whether they are complicit or they are involved in crime and criminality. Thank what you, we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, JJ, we, we have another member of the public. Please give us. Give us your name and uh, give us your question and your comment. Okay, silence, please. Our biggest problem, our biggest problem yes. here in Hellewa Park. Sorry, j just give us your name, please. I'm Asraf Hamildin. Yes. Our biggest problem here in Hellewa Park. We got the first citizen of Hellewa Park are being charged with rape. He's attending court, right? But here, he is not here even now. And the other problem we have here is like, why, why give Gaitan McKenzie a platform here to speak about crime? 15,000 children have died in Palestine and he stands with a Zionist. That is what he stands for. He Man, why should we even discuss Palestine and Israel right now? Like, <sighs> we're talking about children that have died in Palestine. Of course, it is horrible what has happened in Palestine. But can we not talk about the issues that are facing South Africans right now? We are talking about crime that is making it impossible for South Africans to enjoy their lives. We are talking about the South Africans right now. We are talking about the issues that are affecting Hanover Park, the community that is in South Africa. Can we focus on what is happening in South Africa? Please stop measuring us with what is happening in Palestine. Please. He's a Zionist. Thank you. Every Thank Muslim that is wearing a green t-shirt. Thank you very or much. A blue t-shirt. Their hands are wet Thank with you. the blood of Palestinian children. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. I mean, like... I don't want to say it, but it's fine. <laughs> Let, let's take some more. Can we, can we please give...
this is the guy that I said that maybe like I, I honestly believe that this guy should be on stage too, man. This guy is representing the people of color of, of, of Western Cape. Can we please give the community a chance to express the views? The minister and the other panelists, JJ, will get them to respond. Please. This is the same minister who said, fuck Begitele. Begitele allegedly said that he's coming over. And this guy called a meeting so that the people were and the people were waiting for the minister to give them an update. You can see how Begitele is looking at the man. He knows that, okay, this man might probably insult me, but let's see how he's going to go. <laughs> So Begitale ghosted these people. He said that he's coming. And on the last hour, they received an update that Begitale has to go somewhere. And these people were furious, man. <laughs> were furious. Can we give... Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have some silence? Please, some silence. Please introduce yourself, sir, and who do you represent, and what's your comment or question? Good evening, all. My name is Fadil Adams. I am, I am the president of the National Colored Congress, the fourth biggest party in Cape Town. I must say, I am disappointed. The eyes of the whole country is on us, and colored people are better than this. Can we respect this moment? All of us. I want to say to you, JJ, that you've wasted a solid hour that we as activists could have spent making sure our communities are safer. I can tell you now, as the NCC, we have more voters on the Cape Flats where the people are dying than most of the parties on front, but you ignored us. Mm. Colored people please, please will not point, be Fadil. ignored. Make your I'm point. getting to my yeah. point. We have three problems in this country. We have a taxi boss as our minister of police. We have a comedian as the MEC and an IT expert as safety and security Mako. Now for the question, minister, in 2019, your department canceled Operation Impimpi. It was an operation into finding out who the corrupt policemen were that were selling the guns to the gangs that were killing our children. You will answer us tonight. Tonight, Minister, you will tell us why you are facilitating the deaths of our sons. You, Regan Allen, your predecessor was once asked on Cape Talk, what have you done for safety and security? And the only answer he could give was a lot. Leap officers are not officers. They are EPWP workers. Thank you. Thank you, Fadil. Wait. No, please. Wait. You, you, you. These lighties. L last point. What, these lighties have four weeks training and you want to send them into areas more dangerous than Iraq and tell us it's a victory. What kind of color are you? Thank you very much. Let's take a last comment. We'll, we'll take okay. a last. The man should have been on stage, man. He should have been on stage. He should have been on stage. <laughs> We'll take a last que uh, for question or comment from the floor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, 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 calm down. Hang on, thank you very much. <laughs> and it's funny because he literally said that the colored community is better than this. But his own political party is the one that is <laughs> singing, dancing, standing on chairs and causing chaos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, JJ, let's take this last comment. Or question from the floor before we get the panelists to respond and then we're going to go to the other side and take more questions and comment your name and who do you represent sir Mansoor Aaron sir I'm a resident of a Noah Park in Quiet. also hang on hang on hang on ladies and gentlemen can we please give can we please give this resident a chance to express himself thank you Mansoor Aaron sir I'm a resident of in Noah Park the first words Becky Shelley said by the Mbizo was we need all political spheres to fight this crime against our kids and you're not making this political. Why is Fadil not on that stage? That's number one. So you are playing political. Why is that man not on that stage? And the second question is... I'm like, guys, this is the same question that I asked, man. <laughs> you said... The, 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 the... A woman, the, the, the mothers are hiding the guns and stuff. The community need to play their part. But I can tell you that lives here, that 
the people who wants to blow the whistle. When they blow the whistle, the police know who blow the whistle. Thank and you. then they kill you. Thank you very much. And the root, and one gentleman yeah. said, the root of the problem is our in, in poverty. The root of the problem is the drug dealers. And nobody speaks about them because the drug leaders have the money to buy the guns, have the money to corrupt the police. They have the money to recruit our children. Thank you very much. We, we have all the technology. We can put a man on the moon. I'm going to say this twice. We can put a man on the moon, but we can't take a drunk dealer out of his house. Thank you very much. JJ, thank you very much. I mean, like, I feel like this whole conference or maybe this whole town hall should have been Minister Begitta facing the community of Hanover Park. Get rid of the ANC, get rid of Patriotic Alliance, get rid of the DA, get rid of Good Good Party on the stage. Begitele in the in the community of Hanover Park. That's how it should have been like. Because by putting other political parties on stage, you are making it political. You are making it easy for political parties to blame each other instead of talking with the person that is in charge of the safety. Begitele should have been alone on the stage to face the community of Hanover Park. We we're gonna take we're going to take a few more questions and comments from the other side. JJ, I'm going to hand over to you to get a response from the panelists on some of the issues that have right. been raised. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, let, me, let me just start. Let me come to you, uh, Cameron, and I'll give you to the to, uh, uh, MS. Just what, what is your sense? No, start. Yeah. What is your sense of how the, how the community is approaching this? Please, ladies and gentlemen. We have to listen to each other. Cameron, please respond to some of the sentiment of the community. There seems to be a sense of helplessness. No, I think um, what I think we all agree on and what has come out of the community is that we need to work together, number one. <laughs> that the causes of crime, it's a point that Brett raised, the minister enforced it, to fight poverty and what is the reason why young people <laughs> join gangs we've got to deal with that particular issue and deal with it yeah. but the issue is what communities are raising which are critical as well is we must confront and that's part of the ANC's renewal program where there is corruption in the police because as a one person said if you complain and you are an impimpi and you inform about a drug dealer to the yeah. police but that particular police person is also corrupt then you have a problem so that yeah. issue of the frontline services but this problem what we require JJ yeah. is support for people like in the police community police fora yeah. not picking and choosing which neighborhood watch to support which one not to support yeah. we need to work with with national government provincial government local government and it's about the lighting when we drove here tonight yeah. you can see how dark the street is Cameras are not working, except in the CBD. So it's environmental issues, it's issues of poverty. No one can say that the Western Cape is penalized yeah. in terms of the police. All right. There's fair allocation, but the problem is, if you have a political party that is using neighborhood watches selectively, not funding community police fora, yeah. fighting with national government, and so on. And last thing, Gaten was, right. was in Beaufort West for two years. He ran away because he didn't deliver on any of his promises. So in two years, you didn't do anything. All right, Minister. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, you want to follow up that, Gaten, quickly? <coughs> Even count. I was a mayor for one year. He says two. Here's the issue. Ninety-eight percent of all the guns being used here to shoot our people are police guns. The issue we're sitting here with it's not only a policing problem, there's a lot of other factors. The minister rightly said, children, he found nine-year-old children that's not going to school. Mm. So we have a problem in this uh, uh, province. 
while the DA is removing our teachers, those kids are going to become gangsters. Now, Delft, Delft Primary School has been sitting in the darkness for a month. They don't care. But they will wish they, if there's one death, they will all be, here, all be there. We are saying to you, this problem, JJ, we're sitting here with a problem that needs the parents, the police, the government. They, they get four billion rents a year. What do they do with that money? They pay these people stipends. Lastly, lastly, our people are dying. If you lock, if you lock these people up, if you lock the gangsters up, they have access to phones. They yeah. never kill themselves. They give. So if I, minister, my advice to you, take them here, whoever you arrest, and make them have no contact with the outside world. Because they give instructions that the witnesses must be killed in the province. That's why people don't speak. Right. And you want to build a bulletproof play park for our children. I say, Mal, the cops are going to use All right. the bulletproof. Thank you, Gaten. Regan? And guys, I haven't heard this man right here. The pastor man. I, this man hasn't said anything. Like 30, 30 minutes into the program, this man hasn't said anything. It's quite weird, eh? Like you could have replaced this man with that president from National Colored Community. Man. I think maybe something could have been done. <laughs> Reagan, answer, yes. JJ. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you, MEC, answer, please. JJ. Hang on. Can, MEC, can you answer to what he was saying about your, the approach of your own government to this whole issue of crime? Yeah, answer whether or not your government is, is focused on the issue of crime the same way it will be focused in suburbs and so on. Mm. Professor, I trust even if you just give me two minutes, and, and if I have the attention of the audience, I will just take two minutes. I see the ANC and Good and Patriotic Alliance combination is in full swing tonight but that will not deter us it will not deter us because what we have seen in our province where our leap officers are placed jj it's exactly in our murder hotspot areas they are not in our leafy suburbs we have a leader of a political party calling me mad when we have in his party criminals that wasn't even good criminals all of us have fun and they landed <laughs> up in prison but then they want to attack me so it wasn't even good criminals in the first place when i listened to cameron dagmo speaking if i listened to cameron dagmo speaking it was very clear that when he spoke about Bambanani, it was actually the ANC that removed Bambanani before 2009. As a Western Cape, we will definitely continue to make sure that we do everything in our power to dismantle the ANC, PA and good combination and their alliance because we will not surrender the Western Cape. We have come a long way all right, and all right, will continue all right. in that particular fashion. Thank you, MEC. Thank you very much. I, I'm going to come back to the panel. I'll, I'll come to you. <laughs> I'll come to the rest of the panel. I want to go back to the community. Yusuf, who do you have there? Well, no. <laughs> but guys, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest, man. This whole town hall, like, it's pointless, man. It's pointless. Like, I understand it's good for TV. It's good for TV. It's good for entertainment because people can laugh and, and all of those things. 
but like let's like guys let's be honest this whole town hall it's pointless like jj tawan going from johannesburg flying to cape town to do this like you can see like him in, on his face like he's quite disappointed because he actually thought that the people of hanover park would be quiet he thought that okay maybe we're gonna have a discussion that is actually go well, that is going to bear the fruits like you see but you can see him in his face like he's disappointed he can see like it's like okay i like can this thing get over so that i can leave this place because this whole thing that is happening right now it's like it's a total waste of time it's pointless. It's pointless. People have been speaking, but like it's pointless. Like even Bekitele, but I feel for Bekitele, but I think Bekitele lives in Cape Town. I don't know. I feel for Bekitele. I feel for other people who have actually took effort to go there to to attend that that town hall because it's like it, it's a total waste of time. It's a total waste of time. These people will still continue to face the problems that they are facing because even when they were in front of national television, instead of taking the moment to actually say, "Okay, guys, this is our moment to show South Africans what we are going through. This is our moment to explain to the minister that you have failed us. This is our moment to try to explain to political parties." That guys this is the this is the part that you have played and we are on this position because of this part that you have played but <sighs> it's a total waste of time we're coming to you live from hanover park this is but it's good television man i'm telling you it's good television please, ladies and gentlemen silence please this is the e-media anti-crime movement coming to you live from hanover park we are on enca as you can see, JJ, we have a number of members of the community lined up. Can I please appeal to our guests? Let's give them a chance to express themselves. Please, to give everyone an opportunity to say something short and sharp. Please, lady, you've got the floor. Um, good evening. I'm a resident of Hanover Park. Quiet, I was please. 22 years, I was a TA in the schools. Like I see tonight, it's a political thing going on. Let me ask you tonight, the panel, and I want each and everybody to listen because it's our children. Yes. Do you know where gangsterism starts? Yeah, bright, bright, and active, many groen, high feet back gangsterism come. But let me tell you, let's say, I get kindness to the drugs begin. It I get kindness can wash in the back streets when I slap all the mummies. That kindness. Baie van hulle het het nie gemaakt, die vele van hulle is nie meer vandag daar nie. You know, politics is overcoming the colored people. Of course. They play in politics with us. Look tonight, ons moet vir ons skaam man. Gaan kyk op die skole. Weet jy het was van die week in die meeting? Cameron, he knows what I'm talking about. We had all the facilities in Hanover Park. Ons het kinders het die beste leeser gewees, ose kinders in Hennepen Park, het competitions gewen, hoe kan raak ek in die gangster, armoede en ek kan nie liesie, get real, get our help on the schools, look here, thank you, they have removed the TAs, the government, why don't you employ more TAs, children is sitting at home, our matriculants can't get work, why don't you employ more TAs, thank you very much, we've got, we've got Hanif Lunat, uh, all right, we'll, we'll come to Anif Lunat in a moment. Okay, Anif Lunat, uh, hang on, ladies and gentlemen. We have a community activist, Anif Lunat, the former chairperson of the, uh, of the Western Cape Police Board as well. Anif, your point uh, or your question quickly. JJ. Guys. Yes. JJ. It's important that I bring to you the notice of the, uh, the panel. Yeah. That we as ardent crime fighting activists yeah. are shocked tonight that we are infiltrated. The CPFs, the neighborhood watchers are infiltrated by gangsters mm. and politicians. Sure. And this is done at the expense of our communities. We cannot, we are ill affording our communities to be exposed by such an action. This is a disgusting act that I've seen that neighborhood watchers that yeah. I loved and I had ensured had taken their place in the rightful place in this, in this suburb are today playing politics with their positions. Yes. This has yeah. to stop. We cannot have politicians looking after our well-being when it comes to crime. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have... Uh... Yes. Uh...
Good evening. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, please, sir. Please give, uh, give the fellow resident a chance to express herself, your name and where you come from. My name is Priscilla King. I'm from Hanover Park. Yes, something. And I'm just, I'm very disappointed for small kids running around in the streets. In the olden days, the police take the children and ask, why are you on the roads? Where do you stay? But today, the kids just run in the streets and nobody cares. I ask the children, where is your mommy? Where is your daddy? Oh, the tricklings. Well, I'm disappointed in a president that told, that told the, the, the people that Daha, Daha, it's legal. It's legal. How can it be legal? Today our children can't get work because yeah. they are get tested. They got tested. A lot of the tricks that left school last listen, year, listen. they can't get work because why there's dark in the system. The president he knew, knew, knew what he was doing. What a colour. He knew what he was doing. So thank, today thank you. we must pray for our children. Thank you very much. JJ, um, you remember earlier today when we were outside here, it was sunset time, and we saw young children as young as four and five running around. Yes. And JJ and I asked the question, do we want our children to grow up in this environment? The socio-economic issues here on the Cape Flats are a major problem. Sir, give us your name, and would you, you, you'll get a chance, please. Give us your name. Yes. Give us your name, ma'am, and your comment or your question. Please, very briefly, we need to give as many people a chance. Good. Can everybody hear me? Yes, please continue. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm Shaila Naidu from Enova Park. I'm from a, um, a movement called Youth Impact SA. We are from Enova Park. We are based in Enova Park. Yes. I'm seeing a lot of people here right now from Enova Park, but not, I, I didn't see one of those people yet like or love or share our page. And we try in our best year as Youth Impact SA to make the movement in Enova Park. Give besides besides the SEPs, besides law enforcement, thank you, Regan Alley, um, for law enforcement. Um, we are really appreciated. Tell us in 30 seconds, what, are, what, what is your organization about? What are you doing? Our organization. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes. Our organization yes. is where we help children that doesn't want to go to school. We take themselves to school. We help children where the people is shooting. We go do programs there. Thank you. We help them and we help everybody. The old age homes. We help them, but not one time. Don't every area Thank you of very much. politicals comes out. Thank you very much. Sir, hang on. Uh, yeah. You guys there in Hanover Park, man, you need to follow that woman. You need to like her page. She's not happy. Like, she's putting so much energy, time, and effort into these matters. And you guys are not even following her Facebook page. You are not even in supporting her, man. You should be ashamed. <laughs> please, please, ladies and gentlemen. Can we? Can you give us your name and make your point very briefly? We can give as many people a chance. Thank you. Continue. Uh, okay. I'm Toa Rodriguez. Uh, I'm also. Hang on. Sorry, give us I'm your name. I'm Toa Rodriguez. I'm an activist fighting crime in Hanover Park. Please, your point. Firstly, I'm very disappointed in the panel up there. Yeah. That the MC posed the question, "What's a way forward?" Not one of them came forth with a way forward, but rather all of them they agreed to disagree. Firstly, secondly, the police in Hanover Park have failed Hanover Park six months back. Six months back, that six months back, we mobilized the Hanover Park and we went to all the gangsters. We made peace in Hanover Park amongst all gangsters. We requested SAPs to step in and to assist us from boundaries that we can't cross up to now. Up to now, the captain never came to us. We requested Alan Regan as well to come to the table. Alan Regan, you failed us. No one came forth. We made, SEPs took 30 years to make peace in Hanover Park. Yeah. Thank you. All the All right, thank in you. Park, the leaders came forth.
way peace in the thank, weekend. Thank, thank you very much, so, JJ. Yeah, thank we, you we, very we, much. I know we, we're going we, for a break. We uh, coming, JJ, over yes, to you. We're going to take a break now. We're still live at Hanover Park mm. tonight. And the members of the community expressing their views about the situation of crime in this community. After the break, we take more comments from the floor and from the panel. Stay tuned. Guys, but do you like? Do you feel like? <laughs> do you feel like this whole thing? Like, like I feel like it's a waste of time, man. I feel like it's a waste of time. I honestly feel like it's a waste of time. I feel like in the whole hour, nothing concrete has actually been discussed. I feel like nothing concrete has actually been discussed. And I feel like the people of Hanover Park have actually been deprived of a chance to actually maybe do something about these problems that they are facing. Honestly. I feel like it's nothing but a total waste of time. I feel like like putting the matters like into the politicians because like right now is like right now guys it's like right now like we are in election season man. Like politicians will never be honest with the people of South Africa. Politicians will never tell the people of South Africa what is true. Everyone is trying to make the next person look like an idiot. This is what is happening basically. Everyone is trying to make everyone look like an idiot. And this is the reason why it is so hard for 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 anything to be discussed i mean like right now you can look at the crime that has been committed you can look at the people of hanover park you can feel in their in their voices like they are actually heard about what is happening in their in their townships they are, they are, they are actually heard man about what is happening there but at the same time it's like the same people they've been given the platform to actually express how they feel but it, like uh, it's part of truth we are rounding off uh, the town hall from with comments from please settle down please settle down we're gonna take some more comments from the floor uh, over to you yusuf uh jj can you hear me can we please can appeal ladies and gentlemen please sit down please remain calm please sit down please sit down please remain calm we've got another 15 I mean, minutes i mean like you can see right now people are pushing each other people are People are pushing each other. These are the, these are people that are living in the same community. These are the people that are affected by the crime that is riddle in their community. But because they are wearing different political t-shirts, they are pushing each other around. They are pushing each other around. That's why I'm saying like it feels like this whole town hall was a waste of time. I don't know if the minister is not serious about looking at the problems that are facing these people. I'm not sure if politicians are serious about looking at the problems that are facing these people but at the same time i'm not sure if the community is serious about solving the issues that are facing their community because if they're gonna heckle each other like this simply because they are wearing different political shirts man i mean like like and i can see ian cameron right here i can see ian cameron right there this again is one person that should be on stage. This again is Ian Cameron. I don't know why is Ian Cameron being subjected to stand here. Ian Cameron again should be on stage, but I don't think Begitka would actually appreciate having Ian Cameron on stage, man. Because you know, every time when Ian Cameron is on stage, man, it's on fire. It's fire between him and Begitka. <laughs> also, to go, we need to hear members of the public. We need to hear our panelists. Phillips, I'm from Mitchell's Plain. To the minister. And Minister, I need answers, very clear answers. In Mitchell's place. I'm like, guys, can you think if you were the Minister of Police, if you were the incompetent Minister of Police and you, you, you were invited in a town hall and people are behaving like this and these are the people that were supposed to hold you accountable, you would be so happy as the Minister of Police that these people cannot even conduct themselves properly so that i can be held accountable the fact that these people are causing chaos is giving me time is giving me leeway to actually get away without even answering their questions basically just sitting there waiting for time to go so that he can get on his car and say i was in hanover park i spoke with the people of hanover park and we are working on the issues that are affecting the people of hanover park whereas nothing has actually been discussed in hanover park like i would be so pleased if i was an incompetent minister 
like if i was an incompetent minister going to a town hall i would be so pleased man if people were to behave like this i would like i would be so pleased because i would know that i will never be held accountable i know that these people are not serious about holding me accountable they are not serious about protecting their own neighborhoods because if they if they behave like this if they heckle each other because they they belong to different political parties they are willing to to look away from the crimes that are affecting them each and every day and they are they are, they are willing to heckle the people that they they, they disagree with they don't want the people to speak like i would be so pleased if i was an incompetent minister that's what i'm saying last year 2023 15 your junior official has been suspended arrested and dismissed my question is the fact that those guns were used in serious and violent crimes and it was exhibits going to ballistics so what happens there is no ballistic report for court there is no exhibit for court case thrown out the station commander which is ultimately responsible for that fluent running of the station yes. was transferred from mitchell's plane Let, to give, give us your point quickly before you round and off the point that i'm giving why was he transferred yes. not suspended and dismissed a president was set in 2017 with a then station commander. So politics is playing its life out in the Western Cape. I want to come to the MEC. No, very quickly, Len, we're out of time. Very quickly, yes, 10 the seconds. MEC, I want to tell you, your EPWP leave officers, you must please train them that the Poppy Act is very clear. They can't just take photos without consulting. Thank you very much. You've made your point. Uh, we, we know that the Provincial Police Commissioner for yes. the Western Cape is here. And if he wants to say something before we end the Yeah, show, let me ask the Minister the and the MEC to quick response on that. Uh, Minister, the, uh, the, the whole issue that was raised in the first round about corruption within the police. What confidence can you give us that you are clamping down on that? There was also an <laughs> allegation that a few years ago, a campaign called Operation Impimpi was cancelled, which would have rooted out the police who are rotten apples. Quick answer to that, Minister. Well, JJ, I, I don't know anything about Operation Impimpi. What I know is that communities are allowed to report any form of criminality Please that listen. they see, and uh, that will be acted accordingly. I agree with the communities. They have raised it not only here in the Western Cape, that there are rotten there are rotten apples within the south african police service whom we need to take them out of the bag they they collaborate with criminals yes. they go back and report it to the to the people that uh, have given the information but for the fact that they're quite unfortunate and painfully yeah. there are many there are many members of the south african police well, service that are arrested and we treat them as criminals. If you get engaged in the criminal activities, you stop being a, a man in blue or, or woman in blue, we arrest you. But specifically on that case, that investigation is going on of those 15 guns yes. that were, 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 were stolen, which were not for the first time. There is other Prince Law that he, the, stole 2,000 guns here and all that, who was arrested. If they act like criminals, that is so. But indeed, we need to tighten our system. We can't allow the guns that have been found from criminals to go back to the market by our own. Okay. And those people are criminals, and we need just to put right. them and uh, treat a them as such. Let me see quick addition there. Thank you so much. From outside, I have listened to Lynn. I want to confirm, and Lynn knows this well, that the LEAP officers are not EPWP workers. They are fully compliant in terms of the Criminal Procedure Act. And if we consider 15 guns stolen in Mitchell's plane, LEAP officers since 2020 have removed over 550 illegal firearms from areas like Mitchell's plane, Delft. Today, Nyanga is no longer the murder capital of our country because of the partnership with the South African Police Service, with neighborhood watchers, with right. CPFs. It is that collaboration that we ultimately need. And as a Western okay. Cape government, that is what we will continue right, to MET. work towards. I want to take some more comments from the floor, then Jay, we close. Jay, and Jay, I just have two more, Yusuf. Thank you. We're going to take a last few qu qu questions or comments. Very briefly, your name, what's your point? 
Okay, um, my name is Joseph Jacobs. I'm from the National Colored Congress. I want to firstly recognize our president um, here tonight, and I also want to recognize the National Colored Congress Youth League. And then, give us your point just, uh, quickly, Chief. Yeah, just give me an uh, opportunity, guys. You need to understand that youth is not being given an opportunity in this country. And even while we are standing please make here, your point. I need to make my point, but yeah. allow, me, it, allow me, allow me, allow me. I want to address the Minister yeah. of Police. Continue. A few weeks ago, we, we were in a community of Elsie's River, right, where a house was raided and the community stood up because there was a woman that was abused. In the absence of that happening, shots were fired and seven children were shot, right? One 16-year-old girl was killed by... Give us so, your question, please. Now relax, bro. Man. Listen. We, we're um, running out of time. Give listen, us your listen, man. listen. You don't listen to young people in this please country. Give us your That's question. why we have this problem. Give us your question. Listen. <laughs> we're out of time. Give us your question. I want to speak, but you're speaking over me. Give us your question. You are speaking over me. Continue. Listen. A 16 year old girl was killed in the operation. Nothing was done. We are waiting on iPad. We are waiting on SEPs. Now I want to address the panel. This is my question to the panel. Yeah. You guys are playing the blame game. But ultimately, yeah, of course. you are not coming up with solutions. There's no answers to the questions that's addressed. At blame it. It's them. It's not them. It's us. It's them. It's them. It's them. Minister, MEC. Yalla the responsibility in the province. Why are you continuing to serve the blame instead of saying, Kegisa, let us work, man. You've got the resources in the Western Cape a government, right? That is given to you by national government. May you play the budget trust in the national you. government? To listen to Thank me, you. you've made your Let point. Me finish. Thank you. You've made your point. You're yeah. not allowing I'm, me I'm to sorry. finish. Sorry, <laughs> <we are> <laughs> Like the politicians will never solve our problems, man. These people will never solve our problems. We look up to politicians to solve our problems. They will never solve the problems. They will keep blaming each other there on stage. This is what they are doing, basically. We are not That's why we have these problems with youth in these communities. No, no, please, because you, you don't you, allow you, youth. You've made your point. You've not allowing you to speak. You've made your point. What's I'm, the Vrienden, ek het by hierdie gemeenskap geleer, jou kind is my kind. So kan ons net vir een oomlik stilte kry, asjeblief. Jylle het my geleer, jou kind is my kind. I want to say five things tonight. I want to say five things tonight. In this country we're seeing 87 murders per day, 31,000 people killed per year. A lot of them in this community. Minister Becky, please don't throw me out tonight when I say this, but your own police ranks are the ones that are failing us. There are good cops there too. But you know what? When they act, heroes like Colonel Charles Kinyer are murdered and you do nothing, sir. You do nothing. Years upon years, you do nothing. You sit here tonight and you tell us about all of these arrests. What about the convictions? He will never, You're he will never tell you about the conviction, man. Like, it is so nice to speak about... 10,000 criminals were arrested. We arrested uh, from January to, to December. We arrested 20,000 people. But they will never tell you about the conviction rate. They will never tell you about the conviction rate. And they are happy because you never ask about the conviction rate. South Africans never ask about the conviction rate. Every time when Begitkala goes around and does these stupid press conferences and tells South Africans how many people have actually been arrested, people never actually say, Minister, whoa, man, how many people have actually been prosecuted and thrown behind bars? You are telling us about the people who have been arrested. Fine, but can you please tell us about the people that have been arrested and the keys is thrown away? No, the minister will not tell you about those because people are not asking about the conviction rate. Quick. I mean, like, we are making it so easy for the likes of Big Kelly to get away with, with, with answering us. We are making it easy for the likes of Big Kelly to get away from being held accountable because we are not asking correct questions. We are busy and we are happy with the rhetoric. We are happy with the rhetoric. Quick to point out those issues. I want to tell you tonight, your kind is my kind, Achman gaan vlieg. Ek sê nou vir jou, ons kan verander. Thank you very much. Sir, you, you, you having a... Thank you. Last, last point, last point. My point, I have one question. And, Give us your name, please. Yeah, my name is Nazim Dolly. I want okay, to let's ask listen, the minister first, and then I want to ask the MEC for the DA a question. The minister, I want to ask, why don't you clean up Bishop Braver's police station where all the criminals is? And that, then the, and the, and the question for the MEC, as you know, leap, Right, the law enforcement. I was complaining by a chief 
from a one law enforcement officer that owe me money from from December month. The end of the day, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. It's a question. The end of the day, why is the leap officer let's listen a please. criminal from from taking from my business let's and don't listen, own me? Please. So what I try to and for Gaten, I raise four sons where I'm staying, which is not gangsters, and I'm not a gangster. So don't threaten me, please. Thank you. JJ, over to you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give them all a round of applause for participation. Thank you. Uh, let's, I'm going to ask you one minute, in one minute, way <sighs> forward. You've heard what the community had to say. Gaten? 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 Uh, let's concentrate. One minute. I'll start with you, good, and I'll give you one minute way forward. Listen. Yeah. And I must say that it looks like getting McKinsey doesn't have that kind of support that he's trying to portray on social media. Man. Like, if you look at getting McKinsey or if you listen to him speak, you would swear that the people of Cape Town, they are like, they are shifting towards him. But people are heckling him in Cape Town. And these are the same community that Gideon McKenzie is saying that he is representing. People are heckling him. People are, are calling him a liar and all sorts of things. No, just carry on. JJ, JJ, as I said, if we're going to focus on policing only, we're not going to solve crime. If we took money and invested in these communities, we would see a difference. If we took the two billion rand that the Western Cape government has paid for LEAP officers and invested in communities like this, we would see a difference. We need to invest in the social amenities, we need to invest in the infrastructure, we need to invest in the schools, we need to invest in the clinics, the parks, we need to create job opportunities. If we do not change the conditions in which people are living, we will not address crime. Thank you. This meeting should have been held in the courtyards of the flats so that the people of South Africa can see the conditions in which people are living. If you don't understand the conditions in which people are living, you are not going to solve the problem of crime. Thank you. Gaitin, one minute, way forward. A wise man once said that there's nothing that stops a bullet like a job. We will give people jobs. We will give people opportunities. We will make sure that the criminals that are responsible don't get bail. And most importantly, we shall hang by presidential decree all the criminals and all the gangsters. Thank you very much. Thank you. MEC, your last word. JJ, from our side as the Western Cape government and the DA-led government, we will continue to ensure that the Western Cape safety plan is achieved in various communities. That is a three-pronged approach. One is law enforcement. Secondly, is violence prevention, but also looking at the root causes of crime. We will continue to engage various communities because we ultimately care and want to be a responsive government. At the same time, we are definitely calling for devolution of policing you, powers MC. so that policing powers can be at the provincial level and we can implement our policing needs and priorities. But thank you um, All right, uh, thank for you. this engagement. Thank you, MEC. Come around. Your last word, please. What we need Way forward. is every matric, every grade nine in Hanover Park to make use of the bursary scheme to go to college, to go to university, so that our young boys and girls have an option. Number one, it's education and skills. Number two, let's bring back community police for us, support them, Bambanani, and let's experiment here in Hanover Park with street committees. I want to salute Minister Tele. There is now a mobile police station in Hanover Park. And we shouldn't say, we sh thank you, Minister. We shouldn't say that no criminals are being convicted. As we speak, Modak, <coughs> Modak is in custody. The Stansfield <coughs> and his wife are in custody. Bara, Bara from Kayalicha one of the notorious suspects in murder, is in custody. One of the taxi uh, leaders who's been uh, con co uh, accused of crime, he's facing right, a court around, case. Thank you. So what is clear is that the Western Cape will suffer 
if we fight national government. What the ANC offers is to bring communities together, Bambanani education skills, but not to fight with national. Because if we fight with national, the Western Cape suffers. All right. Black people, white people, black people, let's all stand together. Don't okay, come around. stories from the INC. It's all right. Let's work together with national Thank you. to solve this problem. Thank you very much. From your community, briefly. Thank you, Prof. Let's listen, please. Thank you so much for the opportunity, yeah. Prof. Thanks for having us. Um, the Philippi Community Police Forum, through our alliance partners, the Office of the Provincial Commissioner of Police, our local Philippi SEPs, and the CPF, will be inviting all these stakeholders to a stakeholder meeting within the next 30 days where each and every organization, movement, or safety structure would be involved and also present at that meeting. I uh, thank you. All right. Uh, Father, your last word. I just want to say that um, it seems as if we are divided, and it's divided along political lines, and that's sad. I want us to say that communities need to stand together. The, the crime, the violence, uh, unemployment, it's our problem. And we need to find ways of addressing that problem. And that we need to find ways of standing together, irrespective of our political beliefs, our stance, but just to know that we are people. And as people, we need to be one. Okay, Father, thank you. Minister, you've got a last word. Thanks. In 30 seconds, please. JJ, I understand that the subject is very emotional. But criminals out there, they know no good. They know no TA. They know no PA. They know no ANC. They just see the people. I just wish one day we can just behave as the people against criminality. All if we can us. just work together yeah. to fight crime so that our kids on the street, we can create an environment where our kids can grow better. Okay. We'll be there as the law enforcement work with the communities. But I am Cameroon. I'm Cameroon, I'm told, is a DA now. No, he's an Afro. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's an Afro guy. I know him, yeah. He's just, and he's not very bright. He talks, he talks about Tele. <laughs> he talks about Tele not convicting people. That is much straight. Those are churches. Those are, the guy is not All very right, bright. Minister. I'm told he's number three in your list as the DA. We are facing a lot of trouble when you have such a person okay, number three. Okay, Minister, five. thank you. Thank you. Yusuf. <laughs> all right, all right. Yusuf, your, your parting shot. What do you think? Do you think tonight has achieved much? Did, you, did we get to hear the heart and soul of the community? JJ, clearly, clearly from what we've seen here tonight, members of the community are fed up with crime. We are all fed up with crime. I think, I think the lessons out of tonight is leave the politics out of fighting crime. Let's focus on fighting crime. As much as we want... We wanted to hear everyone here tonight. It's virtually impossible. But I think as an e-media anti-crime movement, we pledge to come back to the Cape Flats over the next few months to listen to the community, to engage them, and to hold the politicians to account. You've heard all uh, about it tonight here at Hanover Park. The situation obviously will need a lot of conversation, but also a lot of action. And I hope that all of the leaders here have listened to the community and they can continue to be part of coming up with these solutions. Tomorrow night, we are at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology for an election debate. Uh, you can join us there if you are around that area. But until we talk frankly again, may God bless you. I, this was a total waste of time, guys. I don't want to lie. <laughs> This was a total waste of time, and I don't feel like the people of Hanover Park actually got what they wanted. I feel like it was a win for Becky Taylor because Becky Taylor was never held accountable. I think, like, for people who have been complaining about Becky Taylor the longest, for them to now suddenly shift their focus and talk about politics and political parties, I think it was a win for Becky Taylor. The only people that have won in this whole town hall is Becky Taylor and the African National Congress. When it comes to other political parties and the people that have actually been affected by crime all of them they have lost the guys please tell me what you think on the comment section don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part is subscribe 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 my name is thomas mabaso i will see you next time bye bye
Thomas M.